yeah, call me young blood. Huh? Call me young blood. Young blood. From Doncaster. Are you an ADHD guy? Um, yeah, I am. I have got that condition, yeah. Just like, uh, yeah, I've got a lot of energy and as a kid, man, I was diagnosed with that. So it's probably like, yeah, I am. I'm an ADHD man, yeah. Where do you buy those pink socks? Where do I buy these pink socks? From a little shop in Covent Garden, man, because they're very special, they're tight to my feet. Do you know what I mean? And then, yeah, everyone always thinks, I, do I have like one pair? But I've not, I've got like 27 pairs, man, I promise. Did you ever heard about the festival Pink Pop? Yeah, man, I've heard about it. I used to be there, didn't it? Yeah. Like the guy, the guy who runs the festival took us to see it and stuff and like, tell me the cure played there and stuff. And I love the cure, man. I, I love Simple it. Minds, you too? Ah, oh, sick, man. All the, all the fucking, all the good boys. Sting, Dio Straight? Oh yeah, man, man, I love Sting, man. I, I nick all his, I nick all his stuff. Your father, does he still uh, sell those vintage uh, guitars? Yeah, man, he sells guitars, man. He was mo I was much more into playing them. Yeah. So he was like, do you want to sell them? I was like, nah, man, I'd rather play them. My dad doesn't get emotionally attached to them, I think. But do you get a guitar from him? Uh, no, mate, my dad was always a bit of a... My, I love my dad and he loves me, but he was always taught me, he was like, you've got to work hard for your guitars. Yeah. So I used to work in a shop. So I used to work like eight weeks over summer and he'd be like, then you can have it. You know what I mean? So I was always grateful for that. Yeah. You left home when you were 16, then you went to London. But who paid the bills in London? I was literally working in a pub glass collecting and I went to a, I went to a school. I, went to, I was going to go to art school. I remember living in a flat in Osterley for 80 quid a week, uh, 80 euros a week, with this amazing but crazy lady Marge. She had loads of cats, and I always used to get on my bed. It was mad, and she made, she made lasagna all the time. So I was like, what, we're we having for dinner again? Lasagna, it's like the fifth time this week, man, do you know what I mean? But who discovered you? Um, so I was like playing, I remember doing a music video with my mate. I asked someone um, in my dad's guitar shop to shoot a music video, and then it got put on the internet. And then Chris Difford out of Squeeze saw, <laughs> saw this video, and then invited me to a songwriting retreat. And then I started being managed by him, but that didn't really work out. And then I met another manager and yeah, here we are. Weird, just yeah. kind of started moving, you know what I mean? When you were 12 or 13, you painted your nails, you had red hair. Always, man. Yeah? Did that influence your personality? I think that was my personality. You know what I mean? My mum was, as a kid, man, I got ADHD, as I say, because I got ADHD, a lot of people misunderstood me. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people misunderstood my energy for me just being naughty or kind of just an outsider. Because I think right now in this day and age, man, if you don't conform to a box, if you don't conform to a certain box, old ideologies put you in a place that's not normal. But man, do you know what I mean? What is normal right now? Do you know what I mean? And that's what's so beautiful about the world. And like, my mum always used to allow me to be opinionated and allow me to express myself. So you uh, want to change the people's perceptions? I think so, man. I, I don't want to tell people what to think because who am I to do that? Do you know what I mean? I'm not Mother Teresa. I don't have all the answers. But I'm just like, I see a lot of stuff that's going on in the world and I see a lot of stuff that I'm not happy about. And I want to say what I think to encourage people to say what they think and allow them to f feel like they can say what they think and feel that their voice is important because it fucking is. Yeah. But what, does, uh, what bothers you most in the world? I think there's so many things, man. I think, I think like to, to cut to cut along to, to pick one of them. Like at the end of the day, man, in my country, we can put so much money into war and destruction and, and competing about who's who's been the best country warfare-wise in the world. But I'm 19 years old and I can't go to university for free. Do you know what I mean? Or you look at me like I'm a nutcase if if a if a girl wants to have an abortion because it's going to ruin the future. Or there's still old ideologies that. If a man wants to marry a man or a, man, uh, a girl wants to marry a girl, that's like, that's seen to be frowned upon. That's not right, man. We're, as a young collective man, young people are very intelligent. You know what I mean? We're not stupid and we see a future that we want to be a part of, but it's been held back by a generation that don't understand us or aren't quite necessarily ready for the world to go to that place yet. And that just baffles me. Are you an angry young man? Um, I am angry, but I'm positive. You know what I mean? I think I want to spread. I don't want to divide. I want to unite because 
rock and roll to me, man, isn't just four angry kids bashing the shit out of their instruments. It's been, it's having that fundamental lack of fear to be yourself. You know what I mean? Rosa Parks was a fucking rock and roll star. Fuck you, man, white man. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stand up because, uh, so just show you can sit down on the bus because I think that's wrong. That's what I think it is. I don't, the, my version of punk is I want to unite. I don't want to divide because dividing's boring, man. Everyone's been dividing for so fucking long. It's about time we started loving each other, you know? But are you a poetic punk? Yeah, man, I'd take that. I'd take that every day. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, do you know Billy Bragg? Yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. I've never met him personally. I would love to. But you know his songs? Yeah, man. I'd like me. My granddad used to play him in the shop a lot. Um, but yeah, man, Billy Bragg and Willie Nelson, man. I know that jazz. Willie Nelson smokes a lot of weed as well. <laughs> I've heard someone told me a story. It's like, just smokes so much pot. Sorry, I know we got sidetracked there, but yeah, man. Uh, what's the difference between a singer and an artist? Ah, exactly, man. It's like if you're not representing something, do you know what I mean? If you're not representing something or don't do something that's different or aren't trying to change perceptions, then you're not a singer. You're not an artist, you're a singer, and I don't want to be a fucking singer. Do you know what I mean? I want to, like, represent something and change shit. Because if you don't, it's just like, what are you doing it for? Rock and roll is lying in an hospital bed, you said in an interview. Yeah, man. So they need a lot of oxygen now. Yeah, man, exactly, man. It's like, it just needs an adrenaline shot. It needs a shot of the bum. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think it's just like, because people are not representing anything. Just four idiots on stage in leather jackets singing about nothing. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's like the songs have kind of got to a place where they're not connecting to anybody because they're about nothing. It's vapid and it's like, we're trying to do the same thing like we've been doing it since the 60s and at the end of the day, like, rock and roll's in a bad situation because it's old blokes in Def Leppard t-shirts going, you can't play a backing track, so you can't put hip-hop beats over that. You are killing rock and roll because rock and roll, again, isn't for idiots banging the shit out of their instruments. It's the attitude and it's the feeling and that's why I love hip-hop music so much right now because it gives me the same feeling The Clash did. But you mix it, uh, you mix the hip-hop exactly. and you mix the other, other... Because that's what I love. And that's what I want to do, and, and at the end of the day, man, I, it makes me happy. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I love mixing the two genres because they come from the same place. And, man, it's like when they're mixed together, they're so powerful, and that to me is just awesome. You're also educating young boys. If you uh, read the lyrics in uh, Polygraph Eyes, you kick them ass. Yeah, 100%, man. That song is so important to me because, like, I saw that growing up. Do you know what I mean? And, 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 a, and a bit of an epiphany and a bit of something that went on that clicked in my mind was I was 14 going out in the north, going out very young with a fake ID, like that's just what we do in England. And I would see drunk girls stumbling out of nightclubs with boys that just weren't nearly as drunk as them. And that didn't resonate how wrong that was to me until I grew up. Because we're brought up in this society where this lad mentality is so accepted. You know what I mean? And I was just like, that blew my mind that I didn't think that was wrong until I learned about the real world. And to me, man, it's just like, that message does need to be spread. You know, and it's not just a black or white thing. It's a consensual thing. It's a, it's a society we've been brought up around. Just because a girl wants to wear a short skirt or get as drunk as she wants, that does not give you the right to take advantage of that. You know what I mean? So I just, it was important. I just write about what's important to me and I write about what I see and what I think. Do you still, do you write songs during your tour? Um, I write lyrics, I've always got my notepad, it's always lyrics first. So yeah man, it's it's cool, it's cool. Do you know your schedule? Uh, no, I'm actually getting a bit sick thinking about it. I think kind of like, I kind of stopped looking at it because it was giving me a bit of anxiety just because I was like, five different time zones. If you kind of just go like, take me. Yeah, you fly, you fl fly from England to America, America, Australia, back to America, That's it, yeah. back to Europe. New York tomorrow. New York and LA tomorrow. Yeah, it's good, man. It's the best. But how do you deal with the pressure? Just, like, at the end of the day, there is a lot of pressure, but I'm having the best time of my life. I'm getting to go to places that I would never thought I'd go to, spread my message and play the music I love. And, like, people connecting all over the world. It just blows my mind, you know? It's like it's rock and roll, and it's just starting. Me and the boys are just getting started. And I can't wait. It's going to be sick. Watch out. What, I can't wait for the album to come out as well. Next, next year on Pink Pop? I hope so, if they'll have me. Yeah, man, defo, I'm up for that. I'd love that. Played Lowlands last year, which was amazing. And yeah, I'd love to play Pink Pop, man. That'd be sick. Thank you.